Self, teachers having an itching ear, and they shall turn away from their ears from the truth and shall be turned on to fables. I believe we're at that point in in Christianity today, in, in, in the actual church universe around. And people today don't no longer want to hear sound rock. They want they want something that you know a, a good old story tell to tickle the ear to satisfy their flesh tonight. But I'm glad that Jesus gave a command to the preachers. Amen. We that call ourselves preachers, we better do what God says. Amen. Don't worry about what man thinks or what they might say to you. Because I tell you, Amen. God don't. If, if the church don't lay to preach it here, God will give you a church to preach it to. Amen. I'll tell you that. And I just want you to pray for Brother Brian tonight. I believe God called him to preach. And I believe God's got a message for him tonight to give to us. Amen. 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 Brother Brian, come. Let's give him a big hand. How many feel good? Amen. 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 Well, I'll tell you, I look out tonight and I see a larger crowd. <clears throat> yes, there is. Bless God. I'm going to wait on the Lord tonight, church. Praise God. Hallelujah. I say what to do, Brother Brian. I'll be honest with you. Bless you, God. I didn't really get a message until coming in here tonight. Bless you, son. If you think that ain't scary, <laughs> <laughs> you're standing there in the plant all day long. You know, I'm there 12 hours, Brother Gerald. You know, every hour, every half an hour, every minute, I'm, I'm just asking God for the day, Lord, I need a message. Yes. But you know, I'm so thankful that I've got the Word of God, that's right, that I can study it, that I can read it, and that it's inside. It's that he read it. Now begin to think about what Solomon said. He says, trust in the Lord, Brother Harry, Amen. with all thy heart. Amen. And lean not on thy own understanding. Amen. Right. Brian, son, don't you worry. That's right. I'm going to move tonight, and I'm going to just... I'm just going to bless the body of Christ. Amen. Whether I don't know how it's going to come out, and I'm not worried. Brother That's David. right. Amen. I want to say tonight that I want to just extend a thank you again to all of you that have come out and supported the revival. Amen. But I've seen a difference in a lot of you just in the last few days. That yes. You're not you're not being compelled to come. You're being pulled. That's right. The Holy Spirit's drawing. That's right. That's what it's all about. Yes, Lord. Yes, and if we would just continue that road of obedience, Brother Gerald, yes. then the outside is going to see it. Yes. We won't have to be knocking on doors. They're going to be knocking on arms. Right. They're going to be coming to Brother Gerald saying, we need, we need you to knock out some walls. Mm -hmm. We need some more room, Brother Gerald. Yeah. Praise God. I was thinking back today also about the different messages that God has blessed us with this week. And last night was just such an extreme outpouring of the Spirit of God. How many enjoyed last night? Amen. How many were blessed last night? How many were 
changed last night. Amen. 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 And I begin to think, well, Lord, uh, what are we going to do now? <laughs> Friday and Saturday. But you know, we're not the ones that tops it. It's That's God right. that used Brother Hager last night. Use the singers. Yes. And there's no way in this world that, you know, I mean, Brother Gerald knows it, Hager knows it. If the Lord doesn't anoint me, I just sit down. God. It might be our scheduled revival, but I just, I take a seat. And maybe you've never been around that, but I'm not going to stand up here and preach out of my flesh. But God's laid a message on my heart, and it has to do with the Spirit of God. Praise God. When the Spirit came down upon the church, the early church, things began to happen. And I believe this week, Brother Gerald, that the Spirit of God came down upon this body. Yes. So I'm expecting things to begin to happen. Yes. You want to say amen? Amen. I mean, I'm expecting a great explosion in this church. I'm not a prophet, as Sister Catherine was saying last night, and I'm not proclaiming this, but I believe it in my heart. That's right. Jesus said... Ask, and it shall be given unto you. He said, Seek, and ye shall find it, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one, Brother Israel, that asks, receives, Brother right. Hager. He that seeks, finds, and him that knocks, it shall be opened unto you. Right. So church, I want you to ask tonight. I want you to seek God, and I want you to knock. And allow the Lord to come in tonight and move upon your hearts and bless you in a mighty way. Turn with me. To the book of Acts. The book of Acts. Here's my word. I'm not worried about getting home early tonight. Not that I was any this week. But. Amen. Church, I desire your prayers. I said, you know, I, I admired Brother Hager last night. He said, I'm just going to take my time. That's what you he says, I'm not going to be dignified. He certainly wasn't dignified. <laughs> oh, but you know, that's the way it is. When God moves upon you, as we're going to see, they began to call him crazy. These men are drunk. These men are out of their mind. These men are crazy. But all the while, it was a spirit of almighty God. That's right. And that's what we need. Yes, we do. Without Christ, without the Spirit of God, we can do nothing. But as we were saying earlier, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. And the night, church, I'm just going to wait on God. I'm going to wait on the Lord just to move and to stir our spirits. It's all right. If I have to stand here ten minutes, that's okay. I know what the Lord wants to say tonight. He's blessed. He's, he's laid it upon my heart. I was thinking earlier today, Brother Gerald doesn't know this, but when he whispered in my ear, he reminded me of it. But I got to thinking about when they erected the tabernacle out in the wilderness and how they were anticipating the presence of Almighty God. And when they brought in that Ark of the Covenant, Brother Gerald, what happened? The Spirit of the Lord, church, filled the tabernacle. That Shekinah glory filled the tabernacle to where they couldn't stand to minister. They had to leave. And I remember reading when Solomon dedicated the temple and they brought in all the utensils and how the glory of the Lord, church, filled the temple here. And they couldn't stand to minister because the glory of the Lord was so heavy, was so bright. And I believe last night that we experienced the Shekinah glory. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Acts chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. The former treatise, treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that, after that he, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive, church. Do you remember what he told Martha? He says, I am the resurrection and the life. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, church. Being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. And I'm waiting tonight. Amen. I'm waiting for the promise of the Father, Brother Israel. I'm 
ready. I'm just waiting for the Holy Spirit to move on this congregation. Which saith he, ye have heard of me. Do you remember when Jesus said, he said, it was expedient that I go, that I might send the comforter unto right. you. Uh -huh. For John Hager, right. truly baptized with water. Uh -huh. But, oh glory, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. Yeah. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Praise God. Listen to what he says. But he says, You shall receive power. And we received power last night. Right. The almighty power of God was imparted unto our hearts. But you shall receive power, church, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses, church, unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Amen. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Now, church, I want you to try and get a spiritual mind tonight and open up your eyes to try and see what was going on. Which also said, you men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go, right bigger into heaven. Yes. Then, church, they returned unto Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room. And I truly have asked God for an upper room experience tonight, where abode both Peter and James and John, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Lotus, and Judas, the brother of James. These all continued, church, with one accord in prayer mm -hmm. and supplication with the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. Now, church, I need this mic tonight. Amen. Praise God. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication. In other words, they were supplicating before God. They were humbly asking. They were humbly begging God for his movement. They all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. Now try and picture in your mind, if you will, Jesus had been teaching his disciples for three and a half years, telling them about this coming comforter. They had no idea, Brother Hager. They had no idea, church, what was getting ready to happen. All they knew is that Jesus told them to tarry in Jerusalem mm -hmm. until you be endued with power from on high. Turn with me to chapter 2. Lord oh, bless the Lord. Imagine, church. Imagine tonight if we were his disciples at that time. And we were in the upper room. And we were waiting, Harry. And we were all praying, church. Amen. We were all praying for the movement of God. We were waiting for this promise that Jesus said that he would give unto us. Think about it. Think about the explosion that is getting ready to happen. I believe that truly, church, there is going to be revival. I believe that God has got a remnant, Gerald. I believe he is raising them up today. Chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, oh, church, they were all with one accord in one place. Are we tonight in one accord? Can you say amen? amen. Are we not in one place? Yes. And suddenly, church, that's the way God comes on the scene. Yes, he does. Suddenly, out of nowhere, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. I could just see it, Brother Gerald. I could just hear it. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And the Bible says, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. Maybe I'm too loud here. 
It's all right. They said dog back here. No. No. Right. Please, dog. Uh, no. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude, the Bible says, came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Amen. And they were all amazed, churched and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not these which speak Galileans? And how hear we, Brother Hager, every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born, Parthians and Medes, Elamites and the dwellers of Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Pergia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. People were from all That's over right. the world Amen. gathered at Jerusalem. Right. Can you imagine, church? If the city of Knox would hear and would see the glory of the Lord filling this church. Amen. Uh -huh. They were all amazed, the Bible says, and were in doubt, saying one to another, what meaneth this? Uh -huh. Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. Uh -huh. I want you to know, church, that tonight I feel that wine in my spirit. Each and every one of us in here that are born again believers of God have received, brother Israel, that new wine. Bless the Lord. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judah, bless the Lord, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words, Brother Gerald. For these are not drunken church, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass, glory to God, in the last day, saith God, I will pour out church. He said, I will pour out church. I will pour out my spirit Amen. upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters, Brother Gerald, I shall prophesy Amen. glory, Amen. and your young man, Brother Hager, I shall Amen. see visions, and your old man, church, I yes. shall dream dreams, and on my service glory, and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show glory, church. Fire. Wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned in the darkness and the moon in the blood. Uh, before that great and notable day of the Lord come. Uh, and it, Brother Gerald, shall come to pass. Uh, that whosoever shall call upon Amen. the name Amen. of the Lord. Uh, the Bible says shall be saved. Uh, aren't you glad tonight uh, that the Spirit of God, Brother Hager, uh, moved upon the body of Christ. Uh, and Paul said in Romans, uh, it's the Spirit, Brother, uh, that sets us free. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Let's move on just a little bit. I want to slow down as the brother said. Acts chapter 2, where are we at? Acts chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. The Spirit has came down, church. Things begin to happen. I said things begin to happen. The Spirit of God has moved upon this revival, and woe unto us, Brother Gerald, if we don't walk with the anointing of God. This I say, church, this I say that we need to walk in the Spirit and will not fulfill the lust of the Amen. flesh. Amen. Chapter 3, glory. Now Peter and John went up together in the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried. Glory to God, no doubt, church. No doubt the land was full of the news that something happened in the upper room. A certain man, Brother Jail, lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple. A brother, that man in the wheelchair, a down in Winnemac glory, a needs to know of the salvation of the Lord. A church, the world needs to know of the Spirit of God. Uh, that it sets men free. Uh, aren't you glad, glory? Uh, Jesus said it's the spirit uh, uh, that quickeneth uh, the flesh, glory. It profits nothing. Yes. Right. A certain man laying from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple asking alms. And Peter, glory, fastening his eyes That's upon him with John, said, Look, Look on us, glory. And he That's gave right. heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. He had no idea, glory, right. of what was getting ready to transpire in his life. He had no idea of the power, glory, of Brother Gerald that was in, of the disciples of God. A church the world has no idea tonight of the power, of the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's up to you and I to do what Peter and John did, Brother Gerald. It's 
up to you and I. Glory, Brother Hager. Uh, to bring the gospel the way Paul did. Uh, it's up to you and I, Brother Creed. Uh, to preach glory the way John did. Uh, it's up to you and I, church. Uh, to receive the revelation of God. Uh, of the way John did on the Isle of Patmos. Uh, uh, glory to God Amen. forevermore. Amen. Who see Pete who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asking alms, and Peter fastening his eyes upon him that John said, Look on us. And he gave heed of them, yeah. expecting to receive something of them. A bang glory, said Peter, a silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name, glory above every name, yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, a glory, Peter hey, said, Rise! A church, I say, Rise! Yeah. I'll let the world see, Brother Gerald, yeah. of the resurrection yeah. power yeah. Uh, that dwells hey, down in our fertile soil, brother. Hey, brother. Pray for me, church, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. <laughs> and immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. And glory, leaping up, stood yeah, and walked and entered with them into the temple, yes. walking and leaping and praising God. A church, let's read this again. He leaping up, stood yeah. and walked, glory. A man that was lame from his mother's womb, glory. Hallelujah. A leaping up, church and oh, walked, glory. Oh, and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God Almighty. Yeah, a brother, know. something happened on the scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The spirit of Almighty God. Amen. Amen. All the people saw him walking and praising God. What has happened to this man? We know this man, Brother Hager. This man was laid for years. All of a sudden, glory. Oh, there's been a change, brother. All of a sudden, this man has leaped yes, to his did. feet praising yes, this man. They knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. They were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together, glory! A brother would they be held, Sister Catherine! Oh, the man was changed! Oh, the people began to flock! Oh, the people, Brother Hager, began to run! Oh, they see a mighty movement of God! And brother, when the world sees oh, the movement of Almighty God, they will flood your doors! As the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people, church, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that was called Solomon. Yes. Greatly wondering. Turn with me to the book of Acts again, the 16th chapter, church. I desire your prayers. I feel the Spirit of God heavy in my spirit. Oh, but this old body is starting to break down. Acts chapter 16, beginning at verse 25. A little bit longer, brethren. Along comes this man named Paul. A man that used to be called Saul. A man that used to persecute the church. A man, glory. Of my friends that used to murder the body of Christ. Oh, but Paul, glory, on the road to Damascus, Brother Gerald, had an experience. A glory Saul had. A brother of visitation of Almighty God. A church of ever a time, Brother Harry. Oh, that the body of Christ needs to experience and needs a visitation of Almighty yeah. God. Oh, the time is now. Oh, oh, oh. Church, let us glory. Oh, let us set our mind and our thoughts upon things yeah, above yeah. glory yeah. and not on things below. Oh, for Christ's glory is preeminent, my friends, in creation, Brother Hager. Yeah. He's preeminent, church glory, yeah. in creation. And he ought to be preeminent in our lives. Yes. Yes. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. Glory, how many of us, church, pray oh, and start singing praises unto God when we're under heavy affliction? Mm -hmm. uh, let us look unto these examples, and at midnight, Paul and Silas pray and sang praises unto God, Brother Hager. That's right. And the prisoners, glory, heard them. Yeah. And suddenly, can you say suddenly tonight? A glory, I want you to pray uh, that there be a movement of God upon the city of God. A glory, Brother Gerald, Amen. just a sudden movement. And suddenly there was a great earthquake uh, so that the foundations of the prison uh, were shaken. And immediately, glory, all the doors, my friend, all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loose. Uh, Jesus Amen. said glory. Uh, that is the reason that I come. Uh, to set men free, uh, uh, brother Jerry, uh, to set them free uh, uh, from the bodies and the shackles uh, around oh, the rings, brother Hager, uh, around the legs, church. Uh, glory, Jesus 
said, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save, Amen. church, that which was lost Amen. glory. Amen. Amen. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword. Would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we're all here. They called for a light. And my friends, I have a feeling it was the glory of God. Then he called for a light and sprang in glory and came tripping and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Sir, what must I do to be saved? That is what the world, Brother Israel, is asking tonight. What must I do to be saved? In church, it's up to you and I or the Paul glory of that zipper back from up our lids. And let them know, Brother Anger, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. The Bible says, shall be saved. Yes, right. Amen. Brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. <laughs> they spake unto him the word of the Lord, and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized, he and all his, straightway. When he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them, and rejoiced, believing in God. With all his house. Turn with me to Romans chapter 8. A church, I need your prayer tonight. A church, we need glory. We need to enter in. We need to go through the veil tonight. A chapter 8 of Romans beginning at verse 1. I want you to understand that the kind of glory that dwells inside of you has set you free, church. There is therefore now, Brother Israel. Can you say now? Amen. Now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Yes. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Yes. For what the law, church, what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in glory in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Yes. Paul said, for I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the Amen. life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Amen. Son of God, who Amen. loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness Amen. come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain, Brother Hager. Right. What the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Why did he do this, church? You know that God created us as objects of his love. Right. God created us for his good pleasure. Right. Revelation 4 and 11. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. I remember Jesus telling a little woman at the well, there's coming a time when the true worshiper <laughs> shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. In church, it is impossible to worship God in your flesh. That's, right. That's why tonight we need to wait on God. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind, church, is enmity against God. Right. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. That's right. yes. He goes on to say, but you're not in the flesh, church. That's right. I said, you're not in the flesh, Amen. church. That's right. You're not in the flesh, but the Spirit of Almighty God resides deep down within your heart. I want you to imagine tonight, glory, Brother Gerald. That's the kind of glory that filled the tabernacle, Brother Hager. That same glory resides within this temple. That same glory that will not allow Moses to minister glory dwells within inside of you and I. If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. <laughs> but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies Amen. by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye... Through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. 
For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you've not received the spirit of bondage, church, again to fear, but you've received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And in children, Brother Gerald, and heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ, it shall be that we would suffer with yes, him together Lord. and be glorified. Go over to verse 31. I'll not hold you much longer. We have nothing to worry about. That's right. This old body won't get tired on the other side. Amen. And I can run, I can shout, and I can leap, leap like that lame man That's for right. all eternity. Amen. I cannot wait, church, to wrap my arms around my glorified Savior. That's right. And bow before his feet, Brother Hager, and say, Thank you, Lord. Amen. You were so faithful, God. Yes, sir. And as I look upon his hands, church, and I see the holes in his hand and in his feet that he took for me, how could we ever be silent now? What shall we then say to these things? Verse 31. If God be for us, church, who can be against us? What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall we not with him also freely give us all things? Glory, church. You've already been blessed with the precious promises of God. Right. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth, he says. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, gave rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. That's right. Praise God. Who shall separate us, church? Amen. Who shall separate Brian Pinson from the love of God? Amen, brother. From the love of Christ shall tribulation distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword you know why paul was saying this paul had been through it all as it is written for thy sake we are killed all the day long we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter uh -huh. yes, he says no he says in all these things brother bill we are more than conquerors through him that loves us right. uh -huh. for i am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen, Amen brother. That's all I've got in my heart. Amen. And I'm going to obey the Lord. Church, we have been so blessed to have this revival. We have been so blessed. We need to run with the victory that is ours that Christ purchased for us. He shed his blood. How many times can we say it too much? Right. He shed his blood so that you and I might have life, so that you and I might have the victory in this world, so that we might have the abundant life, Brother Gary. Right. <laughs> Let us stand as they get a song. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, church. Are you crucified with Christ tonight? Are you walking in the realm of the Spirit? Paul said if you walk in the Spirit, you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Maybe you're struggling tonight. Maybe there's something in your life. Maybe there's some bondage in your life. Whatever it is, I don't need to know. Only the Lord. The Spirit of Almighty God can set you free. Yes, you can. Amen. 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 Church, there's a heavy burden on my heart tonight for an individual that's not here. This young lady needs a change in her life. And we need to keep our young people yeah, in prayer. Sure. Church, we're losing them on a daily basis because they, they haven't seen the power of the Spirit of Almighty God. Amen. We need to demonstrate God's power in our lives, which we really do. Look here.
something here that you need to pray about. All down through the week, we've been giving invitations to the altar. I'm going to give the same invitation tonight. If you have a need that you'd like to bring before God tonight, let's play it at the altar. Let's ask God to, to give us our petition and desires of our heart tonight. Amen. If there's one lost here tonight, I don't know who you might be, but if you're here lost, God loves you. And he gave his son for you. Amen. He saw his wealth of the nation, Mary. But all come to repentance. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. What brother Jesus said, he said, it's, Amen. They that are whole do not a position, but they that are sick. Amen. If you're away from God tonight, you need a Savior.
Somebody's lost, try to get them to come with you. Amen. They need to be saved. They need to hear the gospel. Amen. Praise God. Anyone else? Anything on your heart tonight?
You're going to be on television. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I, I heard the read. I know it was there. <laughs> so I told, I told him I'd just have him pan over the audience tonight so he can see this thing. We, we've been taking the videos up there. And they, and, uh, we miss you, Don. We love you. We love you, Don. Richly, boy. Richly. Well, yeah, could I make an announcement? The, the Christian Center is having a hog roast. Saturday? Uh, no, it's at 11 o'clock tomorrow in the park, and this is the time it's for Christian Fellowship. And, yeah, they're having a hog roast, uh, potato salad, baked beans. All the churches. And it's all the churches is invited. That's from 11 to 1. And they're going to have a puppet show for the children. Thanks so the they want me to let everybody know they're welcome to come to uh, uh, before we dismiss, how many was here when the last singers, what was their names for? Oh, the uh, joint heirs. The joint heirs. And Brother, Brother Buck was here end. for the Jackson. Mm -hmm. was here. Was you here that night? And I just felt led to get up and to ask uh, during the service to, for Brother Jackson to come up and be anointed. Yeah. How many was here that night? Yeah. Well, Brother Jackson <laughs> called me this, this morning. And he says, Gerald, I, I just had to call you. He said, I, I just went to the doctor in Chicago, and I took this young man, you know, Mike, I guess his name is Mike or Tim, I forgot his name. Mark. And he said he took several vials of blood from me, and he says when the doctors came back, they said, we don't quite understand what's going on. <laughs> but he says, what we're going to just say, just go home and forget it. Wow. <laughs> you know, they have diagnosed Buck with leukemia, yes. and now it's either in remission or gone. That's right. And I'm so old. I just, to, I just had to tell you that you don't praise the Lord. And I tell you, we need to give God the praise in the moment. Amen. For moving. Amen. In our midst. I tell you, He's He's on the throne. And He's still He's still doing things, you know. You know, uh, people that I don't know about you, but I, I'm glad to see God moving in our midst. Praise the Lord. His healing power. Amen. Any anybody else have a testimony or anything on your heart? Amen. I told Brother Brother Buck I'd mention that tonight. Amen. Let the people know. He said next time he gets up here, he's going to come. Amen. He wanted to be here this week, I know. Amen. He said he, he loved you. <laughs> he's going to try it again, he said. He really is. Amen. Heart's free. Amen. No, I have to testify. Because everybody, well, at least a lot of you guys know my younger brother, Kendall, and what a hard time he's went through. and. Like when he almost died in that car wreck, but God has a plan for people. And only God raised him up from that car wreck that he went through. And then he went through a horrible divorce. And then last year he went through depression that only the grace of God gave him back his sanity. But he came to my, he's always coming to me and he'll get to talking about the Lord. And if he goes out drinking, he'll come and he'll say, you know, I went out drinking and he's really feeling bad. And I'm thinking, why is he confessing to me? I'm just his sister. And I'll say, God, just take hold of him, God. And this is the second weekend in a row he has he is or helping to organize he's in church now and he's thank come to my Lord, house and he said i tell you what i'm going to serve god with all my heart now Amen. and i'm getting in church and he thank says Lord, i'm not living this sleazy life i'm living no more Amen. and this is the second this is the second friday night in a row he is helping to organize a group for divorced people that's single right now and they're hurting and and people i, I told people a long time ago i said there's something for the little kids and there's something for the youth well, what if you're in your 20s and you've went through a divorce and I want to praise God tonight that he that he, he had the group in his home tonight and he's really 100% for God right now and God is able God is so able I mean I have been like that lady from the joint heirs that was here that night and she said she had been battling physical things and I have had physical problems coming against me and Tuesday I'm supposed to go in and have a catheterization on my heart and I'm not afraid of the test. I wouldn't be afraid to meet the Lord at any time, you know. I mean, I want people to pray because I know my kids are scared. My kids are really scared about this. And But God is so real, and I thank him for touching my younger brother. And I thank him because I know he's going to use him mightily. And God wants to young to use people. God wants to use people so bad. And that's why the devil comes against their marriage. And that's why he comes against everything that these young people have got. And I just thank God that I didn't preach to him and I didn't say, oh, you're just bad and wicked because you're out drinking again because I love him. And it hurt me because when he'd say, well, I was drinking again last night, you know. 
But I thank God that he, he came to me and said, I'm making a change for the Lord. So I thought God did it. I didn't do it. I give God every bit of the glory that he's moving in my family's life tonight. And I love him and I praise him. And when the joint heirs was here, and different times I've been here, and I have felt God, and he's been so alive and he's so real. And I go tell people, you got to know that God is just awesome and he's precious. He's just very, very precious. And I know times we get carried away and... You look at things and situations and you get angry or you get hurt and you're just upset. But God is still precious and his word is still true and he will perform every promise that's in there and we just have to claim them and just Amen. leave them. I don't mean to get excited, but God just kept bringing it to my mind. You testify about Kendall because I'm bringing him through this and I do praise God. I just praise him for all there is in it. Amen. Amen. Brother back here has a testimony. I, I got it. You know, I was spoken person or anything like that, but in a few words, I want to tell you that before you and before God, that this person over here been a great uh, inspiration in my, in my spiritual journey that I'm in today. I, I really appreciate that, Brian. Amen, son. The reason I said that because we work in the same place, and now I can see when a Christian person works in an environment with, with unsafe people, you know, they tease one another. The Bible said they would be teased and we would be mocked and, you know, and stuff like that. And today I understand it. And the reason, the other reason I said it because I've been working in this place for Brian. And uh, he knows where I come from. You know, part of my, the years that he knows me, how my behavior was alcohol and drugs and uh, I guess this is not the first time I have spoke like that you know it's just that I don't know how many more testimonies gonna take me and I don't care because uh, I feel that I'm at in the spiritual journey that I have to continue on yes. and every time that I come to the altar and say I just want to get closer to God Amen. Because Amen. every time I say that, I know I'm still short of a, the word of God, you know. All right. We all are. And, uh, we all fall short. But as long as I keep striving for Amen. Amen. Then what I'm feeling today, you know, I would like to continue to it. And I know I have to continue to it. And I just want to thank you, Brian, again, you know. Amen. Because he does... <coughs> I mean, just not for myself, but a lot of people that work with him, and you, some people just don't understand, don't right, appreciate, I mean. or don't, you know, but the day will come when, you know, they will say, I wish I would have listened to this person. Yeah. I wish I would have, you know, give my life to Christ, and, you know, and then I'm glad I came tonight also, because I, I heard that there were beautiful voices before, a couple of years ago. And that's when I, I was trying to change my life around, you know, and there was a lot of inspiration in the songs, you know, and, and uh, they kind of moved my spirit, you know, you know, soften up my heart, you know, and, uh, you know, I don't know, that's what I feel today, you know. Thank you. First of all, I want to introduce you to This is Tony Vega. Um, we've been together, I don't know, how many, seven years? Nine years. Nine years. <laughs> But uh, we both have went through a lot up there, and I know all of you do too, in your plants, in your workplaces, I know Grills with Pizza King, all of this. Like Tony was saying, it helps so much when you've got a brother or sister in Christ that you can go to. Yes, Paul. I want you guys just to shake his hand, let him know that he's Amen. Going, Amen. Let him know to come back. <laughs> Amen. 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 Now, before we dismiss tonight, uh, I remember, and I'm just going to just, just take about a 30 seconds. I know you're getting tired. I know it's getting late. But as a boy, the church would never have a revival. They would ask people to pray. They'd form a, a prayer chain. 
Now, I'm not going to ask you to do that tonight. And they, they would volunteer back then, Sister Cole remembers. And they'd say, now, who will pray an hour tomorrow for this revival? And as a young boy, I raised my hand. I said, y'all yeah, pray an hour. And they would assign me an hour. Like from five to six. And then somebody had to take it from six to seven. But I'm going to ask you tonight, how many would be willing to spend three minutes, just three minutes, in serious prayer tomorrow for the service tomorrow night? Now, three minutes isn't too long. Amen. Would you do that? Now, the Lord says don't make a vow if you're not going to keep it. But I'm talking about stealing away somewhere. If it is your bathroom, in the bedroom, or wherever you can get alone in your car, get alone with God and say, Lord, move in our service tomorrow night. We want to see souls saved. You know, I remember my brother Creed, he, he preached a message not long ago. The reason Jesus came was to seek and to save the lost. Amen. He died on Calvary to reach out to those that are unsaved. Amen. As a church, we need to be revived and to strengthen. And that's what a revival is about. But I want to see souls come in, don't you? Amen. Amen. Now let's pray tomorrow. Three minutes, at least three minutes. I don't care what time of the day it is. And I was just thinking, when the Lord laid that on my heart, I believe they'll pray more than three minutes. Amen. <laughs> you get in touch with God, and I'll tell you, you don't want to quit talking to him. Amen. Thank the Lord. All right, if hearts are free, we're gonna we're gonna look to the Lord in prayer tonight. Brother Harry, one, one real quick, I want to thank God for uh, healing me a long time ago. I never, I never, I don't think I ever said that. Praise uh, God. I had bronchitis so bad, and it's it, due bronchitis. I was going to the doctors and costing me thousands of dollars. <coughs> Maybe I didn't even know it, but I was spitting up blood and everything else, and and I was I gained a lot of weight. I had I had uh, I had a uh, uh, yeast infection to my whole body from the medicine I was taking, and you guys prayed for me up there. And God gave us, I mean, my people perish for lack of knowledge, and God allowed me to have the knowledge and wisdom. I give to some of the stuff, and I give God the honor and praise for it. He also, with prayer, He helped me heal my body, and I thank God for that. And I, 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 I haven't coughed hardly at all. I mean, I don't even get a sniffle no more. I thank God for that. I mean, I, very seldom. I thank God for it. I give Him praise and honor because the church helped me, and God helped me. I thank Him for a lot of things He's done for me. Amen. Amen.
Yes, Lord, we do. Help us, God. And, uh, we cast them out of the lives of these people. He's touching, trying to put down. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We're together there. Lord, yes, Lord. The church will reach together even if it's, these things are sure to be done. Yes, God, we Because the two or more agree. We agree with all these things given in society. We don't yes, know them well. The words bring them up. Amen. Amen, Amen Lord. You can take care of all of them. You know all of them. You can take them every life. And you can change things that no one would believe. If you can. Yes. There's nothing that's impossible with you. Because you love us. And because you said you could if we ask you in Jesus' name. Yes, in Jesus. Amen. Check out one another. Six o'clock tomorrow night. I'll be seven o'clock. <laughs> 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 if you should take away his fortune, let me put me to the test and see for joy.